The Memphis presentation of Zawu Ki is the fourth show in a dozen years that we have organized with Martine and Gilles Chazal. Um, it began with the extraordinary Jean-Louis Foran retrospective in, 20, in 2011. Then in 2013, we did Bijou Parisienne, um, the French jewelry exhibition from the collection of the Petit Palais. And then in 2017, we organized Set and Symbolism, um, the perfume bottle exhibition, that show that was all about scent, um, that also involved institutional partners, our institutional partner in Hiroshima, Japan, the Umimori Art Museum. So with Zawuki, we are once again furthering and demonstrating our commitment to 20, 20th and 21st century um, art and subjects and publish, we published another major scholarly um, uh, catalog. Um, we're maintaining our place on the international stage and we're working with strong institutional partners like the Zawuki Foundation in Paris and the great project. But we can't take we can't take these successes for granted. It takes a village as they say and we would be we couldn't do any of it without your support. You make all the difference and we're very, very grateful to you. So thank you for your for your memberships, for your annual contributions, for your sponsorships. It's all very much appreciated. Make shows like Zawuki, watercolors and ceramics possible. My friend, my friend Gilles Chazal, my dear friend, is a renowned scholar and curator. He was one of the great museum directors of our time. He is an absolutely delightful delightful person. I, I just treasure him. And he, and he and his wife Martine have been here for about 10 days. They jumped right in and lent a hand with the installation just like they were part of the Dixon staff and they almost feel that way. And for, for me personally, it's just been a treat to have to have the Chazals here. Gilles is a, um, a Parisian by birth, quintessential Parisian. And he has worked. He worked at the Petit Palais, the Museum of the Fine Arts of the City of Paris, from um, 1970. Uh, from starting in 1979, he retired as director in the fall of 2012. From 1979 until 95, he was a he was a curator at the Petit Palais, and and, and organized such notable exhibitions and publications as William Bouguereau in 1984, The Art of Cartier in 1989, and The Splendors of Russia in 1993. In 1995, Gilles became the director of the Petit Palais, and in 2000, he undertook the massive renovation of the Petit Palais and made it the, it was a five-year project, and he made it the, the state-of-the-art institution it is to this day. While he was fixing up the Petit Palais, because he had nothing else to do, he circulated their brilliant permanent collection to museums in Germany, Denmark, Finland, Holland, Spain, and Italy. Since the museum reopened in 2005, he launched a series of fascinating exhibitions dedicated to the art of Rembrandt, I've heard of him. <laughs> Goya, the Japanese filmmaker Kuro Kurosawa. He did a show on flamenco dancing, on the visionary painter and poet William Blake. He did a show on Yves Saint Laurent, heard of him too. The Italian impressionist Giuseppe Denitti, that I actually saw that show, it was brilliant. Then Jean-Louis Ferran, of course, Paul Cezanne, and Jose Maria Serra. Just, and that's just to name a few of the projects that, that he has led. All the while, Gilles and Martine, all the time he was at the Petit Palais, they were becoming close, close friends with Zawu Ki. And Zawu Ki is, of course, the subject of his talk today. And so please, let's give a warm Memphis welcome to Gilles Chazal. Thank you, Kevin, for 
how you welcome me as usual and uh, I have to say also to all of you that uh, we work together very, very well. That is why it, was, it is our fourth exhibition and perhaps more in the future. <laughs> no. But now you know everything about me. So <laughs> we are about to speak uh, regarding um, Saoki. Uh, it's very moving because, uh, as Kevin said, he was a great friend, a great artist, but also a great friend. And uh, as you can see, he's smiling. It, uh, it was a man of harmony, harmony with others, harmony with the world, harmony to create pictures, watercolors, which give everyone harmony, peace. I think you can appreciate his smile and uh, we put it over watercolor. So, um, but I have to apologize to be seated, but you can understand I have a food problem. Uh, but chiefly, I, ap I apologize for my French accent, <laughs> so my very bad uh, American accent. And also some slides are not so beautiful as I, I, I expected before, but this one is good, but after all you will see some which are not so good. So please uh, let me um, to tell you a story, this story of a uh, one of the most important patents of the last two decades. And uh, as I told you, indulge me because uh, as always it is uh, quite moving for me to speak uh, about him and uh, about uh, his art. First, uh, I will uh, like to start by quoting two great French poets, Zauki, uh, was fond of poetry and uh, when he came in France, step by step, he became friends of many poets. And uh, I will um, quote two of them who... Sorry, no. After. Uh, once is uh, Henri Michaud. He said regarding the rookie, Zaoki's painting, it is common knowledge, have a virtue. They are salutary. That's uh, I said before, it gives harmony. That's why the was the words of Henri Michaud. Another uh, uh, great uh, French poet, Claude Roy, what are Claude Roy's words? He is my friend because his painting first, his presence later, made me happy. Il y a un problème, je ne sais pas. Both testimonies translate well how Zaoki and his art bring to all a positive experience, a generous life-giving. Art and friendship are insepar inseparable and uh, with him the art of painting and poetry are linked as I said. You know he is a Chinese and uh, his family house was in Shanghai. You see uh, the house of the family on the right side of the slide and close to uh, this photo the name of Shanghai at the beginning of the Yangtze River. So, as you know, his origin is China and the culture also is Chinese. He was born in Beijing, in the north part of the map, in 1920. And uh, his family was, uh, was very healthy. His father was a banker. So he was able to, ask to build such a very modern house, as you can see uh, on the right. And this family uh, is tracing back from the prestigious Song dynasty, a dynasty of the 10th to 13th century. His grandfather 
was a strong man. He was a scholar. He was uh, very well educated. He was belonging to this well educated elite. Uh, especially which has a deep grasp in the two Chinese civilization sources. It means Confucianism and Taoism. And this man was uh, chiefly fond of Taoism. And uh, as he was a Taoist at art, he transmitted to his grandson, to Vuki, this uh, Taoist aspiration to harmony about, uh, I told you before, harmony, inner harmony, but also harmony with others, I told, and harmony with the universe. This is a calligraphy by a Greek scholar, which was also, who was also a poet and a calligrapher and a painter. It is Mifei, belonging to the Song period. This one is the 11th century. What is calligraphy? It is an art. It is on a, only, uh, not only a way to, to write, it is a boss a manner to, to translate both emotion and thought. The Chinese characters are made of lines carrying a, mini, a, min, a meaning. You can see how it's beautiful. It's so different from our letters, alphabetic letter, Latin letter. And uh, with his talents, each uh, scholar can insufflate to these everyday signs an additional beauty and harmony. So each one has his own way to create um, this uh, calligraphy. And uh, Rocky became a great calligrapher. If you have visited the exhibition or if you will visit this exhibition, we will also uh, look at uh, the Rocky painting on the floor, on the flat surface. This is a calligrapher using a pencil, using ink, uh, mastering the ink, mastering the water, the deletions, the kind of paper he used. and. Uh, um, he is uh, writing from the shoulder to the end with a great uh, subtlety. It is necessary for a calligrapher to master the pressure from the wrist, the level of the ink dilution, the darkness of the wheel. You will see the uh, ink paintings in the exhibition. You can understand how difficult it is to master all these matters. And uh, as most a scholar master, a calligrapher is mastering, it's possi possible to leave room to spontaneity, to be easy to write beautiful letters and to balance harmoniously uh, these letters, the strokes of the composition. So I said all these scholars are poets, are painters, are philosophers, are Taoists. And that's why in some paintings you have at the same time an image and a calligraphy mixed all the same canvas. Uh, here it is a painting by the poet and painter Mai Wan, also from the Song era of the 12th century, not 11th, but 12th century. For these scholars, there is only one step which separates the art of calligraphy and the art of painting. They have the same source, the beauty of line, of the line, accessible to those who master brush, brush and ink.
uh, we have seen the calligraphy by Mifei, and this is a painting by uh, Mifei, Song Era, as I told you, 11th century. And uh, I show you this because uh, this kind of painting was in the family of the Aoki. Uh, as I told you, um, it was a rich family, well educated, and uh, sometimes for some feasts they displayed paintings belonging to this family, ancient paintings. And uh, these ancient paintings made a strong impression of uh, Yuki when he was young, and uh, it gave him the wish to be also a painter of high level. Once again, there is a map of uh, the China, Chinese country, and on the right, a photo of uh, Vuki when he was young, when he uh, was a student in the city of Hangzhou. You'd see on the right there is Shanghai, and just below Hangzhou, which is a place uh, there were uh, a school for painting, and uh, he became uh, very young. He, he was accepted in 1935. He was uh, only uh, 15, 15 years old in this Hangzhou School of Fine Arts. And there, he strengthened even further his mastery of brush and the ink art he has learned uh, with his uh, grandfather. And uh, what is important also, that uh, thanks to some teachers who have stayed in France, he began to learn the oil painting techniques. It is a uh, European techniques, American techniques, and uh, he discovered it in, uh, in Anjou before coming uh, in France years later. Anjou, so this uh, great uh, school for arts, was very close to one of the most important lakes in China, donc near Anjou. This is a photo of one part of, uh, of this lake, which name is a Western Lake. And many people uh, come to this lake to enjoy um, the, the view. And Vuki uh, uh, discovers this vocation by contemplating the West Lake on the city's borders, of the school's borders. He was fascinated by the sight of a nature that uh, is constantly changing, involving, and uh, he was fascinated by the barely troubled surface of the lakes, surface, surface that conceals the mystery and generates an infinite variety of colors. It was for him a very great, great, great experience of nature, and uh, it kept him in for all his life. Another view of the, this western lake from uh, airplane. And so uh, it was a man who very silent. It was difficult to to obtain answers when we asked to him about his art. But uh, um, his wife, uh, Françoise Marquet, who went for the exhibition, obtained, because it, she was his life, many explanations, many sentences uh, from him. And uh, she wrote a book, very useful. So we have, um, thanks to this book, many possibilities to understand well what he had in mind. So, uh, I will uh, read some sentences from him, which are written in this book. He said, by being in contact with nature, I gradually understood what I wanted to express. But I was obsessed by the will to never reproduce, reproduce nature, nor even represent it. My desire is 
painting what cannot be seen, the breath of life, the wind movement, the life of form, the blossoming and fusion of colors. So he was very fond of nature, of course, of the Chinese painting representing nature, but he wanted to go further and not to represent, but to give energy to help each one to discover the strength of nature uh, beyond uh, all what we can see. As I told you in this school, it was able for him, enable for him to discover French paintings thanks to the professors, the teachers who came from some years in France. So, and also in the, some magazines there were photos of uh, French art of that time, the beginning of the uh, 20th century, the end of the 19th century. And so he was uh, enabled to look at Cézanne. For example, on uh, the left side of uh, um, our view, there is a painting by Cézanne named Maria House in 19, uh, 1899 from Kimball Art Museum donc in your country. And on the right, it is a painting by Zaoki when he was young. So you can um, see how Cézanne influenced him. Uh, it was in 1948. And uh, Françoise Marquez-Aho gave recently this uh, painting on the right to uh, an important French museum in Paris, the Musée d'Art Moderne. So Cézanne's landscape made a vivid impression on him and uh, he finds in uh, them an inspiration, a source of creation, as you can see. But not only, he was also very interested by uh, Matisse. Yeah. On the left, uh, there is a um, painting by Matisse, also in your country, in Barnes Foundation. Uh, painted in uh, 1907, uh, and uh, on the right, uh, Zawaki painting his, his wife, a uh, Chinese wife, when he was, he was very young. It was uh, his first wife in 1949, one year after the paintings uh, in front of Cézanne. It was also interesting by Chagall, by Picasso, by Modigliani and some others. And uh, looking at uh, all these um, uh, photos in magazine, pages in a foreign magazine, and with the help of uh, his uh, teachers, he considers that uh, their works are a confirmation that Chinese tradition has become sclerotic. It confirms the necessity for him of opening a new path. Uh, as you know, the, my lecture is named Passes on Another World, so to be beyond nature. So he decided to travel to Paris uh, to get in, to be in direct contact with the creation of these innovative painters he admires so much. Matisse, Chagall, Picasso, Modigliani, Cézanne and others. This is how he, uh, he was a scholar in Anjou, but he became teacher. So when uh, he came in France, he was uh, adult, experimented, married with a son, and um, it is here with Lalan. We have, we have seen a portrait of her, uh, a painting. Now it is a photo in 1947. He had his own house, his Anjou, as, as a professor, as a teacher. So when he arrived in 1948 uh, in, in Paris, he is a mature man, rich of all his Chinese training, aware of his own value. You, you can see he's smiling well, uh, very happy and very aware of his own value. As I said, he, he was having already uh, a responsibility of teaching in his own school in Anjou. 
and uh, strong of his will to find a new pictorial way by confrontation between uh, his shiny sensitivity to the French uh, new aesthetics. And uh, I will uh, use also some words we can find in the book written by Françoise Marquet. Who can understand the energy it took me to listen to and to assimilate Cézanne's and Matisse lessons? And then to go back to this heritage bequeathed to me by the painting of the Tang and of the song periods, the song era, which is still for me the most beautiful in the world. So he is a Chinese, a China, a Chinaman. Um, he is interested by Cézanne, by Matisse, uh, by a um, uh, French artist, but also for him. The most important painting is a Tang and Song one, and we have seen uh, two paintings of the Songera before, by Mi Fei and by uh, Mai Wan. So he arrived in Paris, and uh, we know that uh, in the afternoon when he arrived in Paris, he immediately went to Louvre Museum to be in contact direct with the French painting. Uh, there is a photo of uh, 19th century uh, painters. He visits Louvre and uh, also he buys immediately a radio transmitter because for him music is a part of, um, of his life. Uh, I told about poetry before, about uh, calligraphy, about painting of course. But so, so music is very was very important for him. That's why we have listened some music before my lecture, because when he came each morning in his studio, before painting, he listened music. On the right, there is a photo of a friend of him. Hans Hartung, a German painter uh, living in Paris, because um, Vuki quickly finds his place in the post war Parisian artistic cycles, uh, with many, many artists coming from all over the world to study in Paris, to look at the um, new, new style, to go in the galleries, to meet together. So he becomes friend with many artists from other, all over the world, I said. For example, this uh, German artist attracted by the rich and innovative Parisian culture scene. And uh, Ansartung was an abstract painter, and uh, it is him, Antung, Artung first, who introduced so the key in the new adventure of abstraction. And uh, as a friend, he gave him a, a painting like this one you have on, on the left side, a painting of 1949. I told you that painters were coming from all over the world in Paris at this moment. And the photo uh, show you an American woman, you know, John Mitchell. And uh, the man is Jean-Paul Riopel, a Canadian man. And they, they were together in Paris. And they became, they became also uh, great friends uh, of uh, Zaoki with Norman Bloom, with Sam Francis, uh, John Michel, and uh, many others. All of them became uh, lifelong friends to him. And uh, Wuki, uh, always searching harmony with friends, enjoys exchanging, exchanging works with them. So uh, you have two paintings on the left by Riopel, on the right by John Michel, which were belonging to the private collection of Zahoki. 
and all this uh, painting, uh, age changing works uh, are now and in a French museum in, uh, in France, in East Soudan. And um, Francoise Marquet uh, gave all this, this private, private collection uh, of this uh, work section gene. So it, it's very easy for you, for us and you, to, to know what uh, was interesting him for, for the rookie in this uh, discover of abstraction art. He, he was not a, a painter of abstraction art. Uh, what he wanted to paint is this, for example. It is uh, beyond nature, but the nature is there with this tree. And as you see, there is a poetry. Uh, I uh, use some words by Henri Michaud at the beginning of uh, the lecture. And uh, Henri Michaud uh, discovered these lithographies by Zaoki in 1948, because when uh, Zaoki arrived in Paris, not only he went to Louvre Museum, not only he met with many painters, but also he wanted uh, to study techniques new for him. It means, for example, lithography. And uh, this is one of uh, the lithographies he, he made. And uh, it was uh, shown to Henri Michaud, a very famous poet, a French poet in that time. And uh, this poet decided to write a poem in front of these calligraphies, and it is how it was published. So, uh, at this moment in Paris, the um, Wookie creates original works in which trees, uh, there, uh, animals, but also men and women, you can see uh, on the um, lower part of this calligraphy, to short design, all are floating in lighty colored spaces. And uh, as I told you, the famous poet Henri Michaud finds inspirations and writes a series of poems which will accompany uh, these lithographies editions. And it was very famous, and so it was an help for Zaruki to be known very quickly in Paris as uh, an interesting artist. And uh, you know, it is not abstract art. All his friends were abstract painters, but not him yet. Another uh, example, two of these lithographies, I have not uh, the poems by Michaud, it is not important for you, but you can see what was the kind of uh, artworks he was able to create in Paris, trees and some evocational landscape or animals. And also it was possible for him with remembrance of the practice of calligraphy with uh, these uh, fine lines. And underlying these creations, the Taoist philosophy is very well present. Remember what I told about his grandfather. Taoism is a philosophy founded on the idea that uh, vital creator breath generates a living universe. A living universe where everything is linked where everything is in constant mutation, where everything is in a perpetual dynamic generating mutual transformations through interactions in that ethereal space, where everything aspires in harmony. That is Taoism and that was the mind of his grandfather of uh, Vuki himself. On the right, we look at uh, a landscape, once again, of the Song era, uh, which was so important for, for the Oki, the best painting uh, in the world. And uh, 
on the right, sorry, and on the left, this is the watercolor by Zaoki because after uh, discovering Paris, he also decided to discover France landscapes and also in Europe. He traveled in many countries, but more than anything, he wishes to confront his memories of his country's nature, spectacular mountains, with the reality of the French Alps. So in front of such an impressive spectacle of nature, his sketchbooks fill with watercolors. So you can see the watercolors uh, at the beginning of uh, his life in France and uh, the exhibition, you can uh, look at the watercolors of uh, the end of um, his life. And it was uh, on a lit little sketch uh, book. So the watercolors uh, are very short size, as you have also uh, near there with uh, Suzanne Mascata, uh, I don't say the correct name. And but the exhibition, the watercolors are very big. I will explain you uh, why. So he went to the French mountains, he went also in uh, Italy, and this is uh, a view uh, of uh, an Italian uh, city. He, has, he visited the, the most beautiful cities in Europe to discover, the, to discover sorry, the architecture. And inspired by them, uh, his paintings of that time sees uh, some skeletal architecture. As you know, it is not a photography. It is not uh, uh, a way to make, I can say, postcards, but to know to be inspired and to use uh, always the the master of a uh, few lines, very vivid, floating on the horizon, in a vast space made of delicate and vibrating light. The same space, the same uh, vibrating light, you can see the vision with the watercolors. And sometimes, as you can see, uh, uh, they are animated by tenuous human figures and birds flight. Of course, uh, the world's true reality can be found here, but with a minimalistic uh, representation, sitting once again in an ethereal void full of vital possibilities, it means Taoist spirit. I spoke about uh, Matisse, Cézanne, uh, Modigliani, Picasso, uh, Picasso before Cubism, of course. And also he had discovered in China uh, Paul Klee. And uh, he had uh, an opportunity to go in Switzerland as he became very famous um, easily and still the beginning. There was many exhibition of uh, his uh, watercolors and uh, lithography in Europe, and she fled Switzerland. So he was able in 1941 to uh, to go to Bern and to discover the Paul Klee directly Paul Klee's paintings and watercolors. So on the left side, the left side, sorry, there is a watercolor. Uh, 1989, of, made by uh, Paul Klee, and uh, you can see on the right uh, watercolor made in 1951, the moment we discover directly the art of Paul Klee uh, in Bern. And uh, at that time, uh, Zaoki dives more deeply into Paul Klee's art, and she flew into Klee's desire to reveal other realities different to what the age can see, as I said, to be beyond nature, a way towards something beyond the real. 
Klee pushes him to distance himself even further from any reference to reality. So, uh, Vuki, as he said himself, engages in a search of passes to another world. This is a painting by Vauquin in 1955, so three years after his stay in Bern. And uh, this uh, experience makes Vauquin push us further his artistic expression, representing primitive Chinese sign floating in a space with no limits. <coughs> he likes space, he likes space without limits, and he used the calligraphy, the sign he has uh, listened when he was young, but they are not real signs, there is no centuries to read. These signs are images. All gravity is abolished. And uh, in that time, he gradually evolves towards creations more and more detached from the world. He was working only in his studio, removing itself from the outside world. It was quite a prison. Light was only coming from the ceiling. Um, there was no view outside from the studio. So he was, um, as, he, he, as he said, I want to paint what cannot be seen. I told you the breath of life, wind movements, life of form once again, the blossoming and fusion of colors to evoke without representing. One uh, another of uh, the friends he met, but not in Paris. It is an American painter, Marcarelli, uh, on uh, the left, uh, painting of 1955. As I told you, he became famous uh, very quickly. He was able to, uh, to be uh, exposed, to be displayed in, uh, in Bern, in Switzerland, and also in the United States. Um, he had many exhibitions in the United States, but the first time he came, it was in 1952. No, 1957. He exhibited in 1952, but it was, um, his first visit was in 1957. And uh, there he met many painters, which became friends, for example, uh, Conrad Marcarelli, who sees there, but uh, Franz Klein, uh, Adolf Gottlieb, and uh, uh, many others. Pollock uh, dead, was dead uh, at that time, but he was very interested in by uh, uh, Pollock's arc. And during his stay in New York, he discovered the American abstract expressionism, expressionism using vast canvases, um, allowing uh, painters' spontaneity. It was uh, a great help for him to uh, see the way he was working now. That's why he, uh, he used, after this experience, he used very, very bang, big canvases. I have told you before he was using uh, Short, uh, short canvas and sketch for watercolors, but with the influence of the American abstract painters, he enjoyed these large canvases, allow him to to have a great space, to have a, a great, great freedom. So he moves on to large canvases. This painting was painted in 19. 57, you have the signature on the right and the date, and uh, now it be be belongs to the Detroit Institute of Art. 
he said, Vuki said, the bigger it is, the more comfortable I feel. That's why the watercolors uh, in the exhibition are so big. Uh, he also admires the spontaneity and the amplitude of gesture needed to show the pigments on the canvases. He likes this freedom which allows him to deploy his creative breath. His creative breast, once again, inspired by Taoism. As uh, I told you, he was very well educated. He knew well uh, Taoist and Confucianism uh, literature text. And uh, when uh, he, wa he was shifting to non-figuration, non-figuration, sorry, he undertake, undertakes the translations of Taoism major book. Uh, it means Tao Te Ching. Tao Te Ching uh, written by uh, Lao Tzu. On the right, there is a painting uh, of the 5th century representing this great uh, Taoist uh, philosopher Lao Tzu. And uh, on the left is one of the books uh, published um, regarding this uh, um, Tao Te Ching. And what Tao Ki said, I am reading Lao Tzu at the moment. It was, it was in Paris. He became an uh, abstract painter. What I would like it was produce a painting he refers, like the book refers, Lao Tzu refers, he refers to in the Tao Te Ching. Uh, and he, he made a translation of uh, the Tao Te Ching. It is unpublished, but uh, as uh, we were close friends, it was uh, unable for me to, to discover the translation that I hope someday it will be published. And the Tao Te Ching is a very difficult uh, book, very difficult to translate. So uh, there are many very different translations of the Tao Te Ching, and then, as I said, I hope some, some days it will be able to have a Zaoki translation. And for example, interesting for us, there is a sentence translated, for example, large shape with no contour. Once uh, it's a usual translation. Another translation, large shape but evasive. But how the Wuki translates? Large painting, no image. <laughs> yeah. So no image of what we can see, but uh, an image beyond that, and a large on a large canvas, on a large space, a new image you cannot imagine, like uh, Paul Klee uh, was able to paint too. As I can understand, it is an interesting reflection on the, the move of the Rocky towards non-figurative, abstract and abstract art. It was kind of confirmation for him what he, he had to do to paint, referring to Lao Tzu, referring to Tao Te Ching, referring to his uh, Chinese education. Uh, this painting is named a uh, tribute to Tufu, 1956. Uh, as you can understand, uh, Zaoki has painted hundred and hundred uh, works, so we have short time, and uh, I will limit uh, the slides. Uh, only to give you an idea of the evolution, uh, how his art is evolving over the years, over the decades. And uh, at the heart of this creative adventure, 
There is a particular series, uh, a series of tribute paintings. Uh, why this tribute? Because, uh, as I told you, he, he was a nice man, friendship was so important, and uh, he, he wanted to thank people living or the masters uh, who influenced him. So we are um, all together discovering some uh, these uh, paintings of the, these creative adventures. They are testimony of uh, how Zaruki wishes for no, his wish for harmony with others, with friends, and with the master of the past he admires. For example, the master of the Tang and Song era paintings, you remember. And uh, also, he admires the poem of that period. So, hence, this is a tribute and homage to the great Tang poet Tofu of 1976. And uh, in the exhibition, there are ceramics which are also homage to Tofu. And uh, it is abstract act, uh, expressionism, and using not uh, calligraphy readable, but uh, calligraphy uh, totally free. And remember, I was speaking about Henri Michaud. This is uh, Henri Michaud. Remember how important his friendship uh, was uh, for Zaoki. And uh, that's why in uh, 1963, he has painted this tribute to Henri Michaud. Uh, we have seen before a tribute to a Chinese poet, to Fu, and now it is a tribute to a French poet, Henri Michaud, once again to say to you how important was poetry for, for Zauki. I told you um, in the morning, coming in his studio, first uh, he was listening music, but uh, in the evening, the day before, he was uh, reading poetry. And uh, he has illustrated many, many uh, books by uh, French poets, Michaud and others, during his life. <coughs> this uh, photo is uh, exhibitions, and uh, I announced before the way it was uh, using uh, ink on the floor with many kind of brushes. If you look at uh, very well to the photos which are in the exhibition, you can see the different brushes in, the, in these photos. Uh, so he was a very, very sensitive man, uh, as you can understand. And uh, in his desire to open the new path, we were speaking about to a pass of a new form of creation. He has long detached himself from the art of the art of calligraphy. This uh, art of the brush, he totally mastered in his childhood. So in this art, he was afraid to remain trapped. So he needed to step out, uh, which was for him a comfort zone. But um, as for as all of us, he had a very, very uh, moment of personal life, and uh, he was not uh, able to paint with oil. To paint with oil was for him uh, difficult because. Uh, uh, he wanted, of course, to be the best possible, and uh, each morning, coming in the studio, uh, listening music before painting, he was thinking how uh, it was possible to, uh, to, to be better with his painting. It was a great effort. 
And at that time, um, with a um, moment of very, very person, personal life difficult, uh, his friend Henri Michaud, once again, uh, always present, friendly, supportive, encourage him to go back to his roots by practicing his history, traditional art. So in the 70s, uh, he used again calligraphy, it was easier than, uh, than oil paintings to uh, dilute ink. And I am sorry, uh, some slides are not so good. So this is a slide of uh, uh, ink paintings, but you have to go in the exhibition to see a very beautiful one. We are in 1972, and uh, this art of uh, ink uh, paintings finds again an essential place in his creative adventure. Uh, he was able to paint uh, again a few years later uh, using oil on canvas, but also at the same time he still works with uh, this traditional Chinese technique and uh, the exhibition you can uh, admire some beautiful uh, example. And those creation translate with the same powerful expression of paintings, like paintings, is new text of the primordial and creative explosions of, li of life uh, from the world. Donc, oil paintings, <coughs> ink paintings, and watercolors. Remember uh, the sketchbooks, uh, watercolors uh, visiting Alps and so on. And also at the same time, like uh, for uh, paint ink, uh, it was easy for him to paint very close to the paintings of the time. He uh, enjoys this uh, art of watercolor, of color pigments diluted in water. And like uh, ink, this technique offers him some relaxation after the demanding work that is all painting on canvas. Work which requires countless patient returns to the masterpiece in Genesis, uh, as I told you each, uh, each day, every morning. This is uh, another tribute, a uh, tribute to John Fitzgerald Kennedy in 1963, when he learned uh, um, your president was uh, assassinated. For him, it was totally horrible. Uh, how harmony can be horrible broken by the violence of, of, one, of one. And this tribute is uh, for um, the president, of course, but also to your country, to the United States, which brought so, so many, so much uh, to him. I remember the links with the uh, uh, American artist uh, with the uh, use of canvas, the freedom, and so on. A new tribute uh, now. Uh, this is uh, Edgar Varese, a very special uh, musician. Uh, remember, uh, be, uh, at the beginning of uh, this lecture, we heard some music, and uh, also Vuki uh, enjoy music. I told you, and contemporary music, and very, very contemporary music. Uh, this one uh, by uh, Isaac Gavarez, very strange, very new in, the, in that time. He became afraid. And uh, this music always accompanies Aoki in the creative solitude in his studio. And that is why he painted a tribute to Edgar Varese in 1964, very, very dynamic. And uh, regarding this, Vuki uh, said it uh, helped him listening at Garvarez's music 
to hear a sense of space, of uh, infinity. And I forgot to say you also that uh, in New York he discovered free jazz. Free jazz who had a great, great influence uh, of, uh, uh, for him. And uh, we see, still exist uh, all uh, these records. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had many, many records uh, on, of, uh, of free jazz. I told about uh, poets, French poets, Chinese poets. This is not Michaud, of course, uh, but René Char, another great French poet, great friend uh, to Zaoki. Uh, you can see how Zaoki is smiling, meeting uh, him uh, during an, uh, an event. And so he has painted in 1973 this tribute a new homage of poetry once again. And I show you all these tributes to uh, show you how uh, the art of Wookie is uh, evolving through years and decades. Remember the influence of Matisse when he was young? And this is a tribute to Matisse in 1986. Uh, once again, uh, this is a, a donation by uh, Françoise Marquez Arrault to the French uh, Museum, Musée d'Art Moderne de Paris. Watercolors, ink paintings, oil paintings, illustrations of poetry, but also he was able to uh, paint of ceramics. Um, porcelain is a very, very important uh, artistic tradition, you, you know that. As a child in uh, his rich family, uh, his rich family uh, had the beautiful old paintings I told you but also very, very beautiful um, uh, ceramics, but very beautiful porcelain. And uh, when he was young and during all his life, uh, Zouki wanted to paint. So when he was young, he painted over the, the, the porcelain of the family. <laughs> you can imagine very old porcelain, beautiful porcelain. He decided to take watercolor, uh, perhaps ink, I don't know what, what, and to, uh, to paint. Oh. The mother was not so happy. You know. <laughs> but porcelain is bright, it's white, it's luminous. So, what beautiful object on which to paint? So in France, he was uh, happy to discover our tradi French tradition with the national uh, manufacture of uh, Sèvres porcelain. And these are plates he painted in 1979. You can see uh, exhibition. In France, there are not only uh, national manufacturing, but also private manufacturing. Uh, Bernardo, very important in Limoges. Uh, one uh, example, it is not his exhibition. And uh, it is uh, really an, um, an homage, a tribute to Tufu, once again, the poet of the song period we have, we spoke about it. All these uh, are abstract art till the, uh, the 50s of, the, of this century. And uh, you remember, I show you a photo of Jean-Paul Riopel with John Mitchell uh, at the beginning with the two paintings exchanging. This is uh, once again uh, Zaoki Young with uh, Jean-Paul Riopel. Jean-Paul Riopel was Canadian, a great friend. And uh, 
Riopel was many times living in Paris, but also he has decided one moment to stay in Canada, to move to Quebec and uh, not to go back to Paris. And uh, a sign of friendship when uh, Riopel moved back to, Canada, to, Can to Quebec, he sent two, two Canadian maple trees to Wookie. And when uh, Wookie learned his friends, donc Jean-Paul Ropé died, he, uh, he locked himself in his studio. And uh, for the first time, he used photos. We have one on the left. This is uh, one map uh, of these maple trees um, given by uh, Riopel, who was good. And, uh, but he, uh, he was suffering and become yellow and uh, Vuki made photograph photos of this uh, yellow tree and uh, he used these photos in his studio to remember Riopel, to remember the fr this friendship, to think about the days of Riopel linked to the days of the apple tree and for the first time he, he used again the nature in front of him in a studio to paint uh, a tribute that is a very, very large tribute you know, painted in 2003. So in these photographies, in photographies, the juxtapositions of the dark steps of the, of the garden soil in uh, the house um, in the countryside in Godigny. Uh, in each house, he had he had an, an house in Paris, an old, an house in the countryside in France at Godigny, an house in uh, Ibiza Island. That's why there is many uh, many watercolors uh, painted in Ibiza. Uh, in all this uh, place, he had uh, a studio. He was uh, it was impossible for him not to paint every day. Huh? When he was traveling, perhaps one or two days, he, it was, he had no studio, no, no possibility to paint, but it was a su suffering for him. So, so uh, uh, there is no materialistic relationship between the, these photographies one of the two we have seen, and the, this painting, incredible of beauty. These modest photos are just nothing compared to the powerful strengths emanating from this triptych. These photos were useful, but you can understand it is uh, another thing you have in front of you. And it is only a photography of this painting, it is absolutely tremendous. But uh, this moment marks for Zaruki a first glimpse back towards the world around him, the beginning a new, of a new phase in his creative adventure. And this uh, new phase of creative adventures is in the nature. Uh, when he was painting in his studio, in his, in his various studio, he wanted absolutely to be alone. But at this moment, it was too difficult for him to paint or painting his studio, so he decided to use watercolor in, uh, outside and uh, some friends were allowed to, to be with him. It was a privilege. Uh, this is a photo uh, made in the south of France in a property belonging to uh, a well-known man on the right, Emmanuel Ungaro, a very important uh, Italian and French fa uh, fashion designer. And uh, on the upper side is Dominique de Villepin, you know, who was the prime minister uh, for, uh, for Jacques Chirac. And uh, there were a close friend as us uh, for him, of him. And so now uh, Zaoki uh, decided to create in the middle of nature, 
using the watercolor technique on large sheets of paper, not uh, as big canvas as he has discovered with uh, abstract painter in New York, but um, in fact, uh, large, large uh, watercolors, large paper, you can see in the exhibition. And uh, this is uh, one of these watercolor painted in 2008. At the moment uh, when his eyes once again are looking at the world, observing the beauty of nature, stimulating this new creative stage. But once again, the work created is not a figurative representation of the world, of nature. His expertise in using a brush and diluted pigment helps him once again to unleash his creative brace with complete freedom. The skill of tracing powerful and colorful lines at its utmost best. With this technique, his works are bright, like an explosion of bright of light, sorry, airy like a flight of birds and alive like a happy song and happy music. So the exhibition with all these watercolors of the last phase of this creative life invites you to enjoy this, as we say, firework of colors and joys. And to end, <laughs> voilà. discover him in uh, nine, uh, 22, the beginning of our century, uh, when he became a French academician. And uh, this is a photo of him before, very, very good canvas, you can imagine. Eh? And uh, to conclude, uh, as uh, Henri Michaud and Claude Roy wrote, I can tell you, uh, do welcome the Oki art and this person. Both are so salutary. Make yours a piece of his face in life, constantly renewed. And sorry for my English. <laughs> Thank you. Jill, will you take a few questions? If you have, with pleasure. Uh, well, I've got one. <laughs> so it, it was, when he begins to work outdoors, is that, a, I mean, that represents just a tremendous change for for Zawu Ki, right? Yes, yes. It and why do you think why do you think he made that decision? Do you know why? Because it was too difficult for him to use all painting. Nice. As I told you, it was uh, um, when you paint with oil, we have to wait. The paint, the oil, have to dry, and also it was a very. It was always insatisfied. So each morning when he came in his studio, he was thinking not so bad. Yes, the painting is dry, I have to paint again. And, and many times he destroyed. Mm -hmm. But using watercolor, in, in, there is a photo in the exhibition, uh, he's painting watercolors. And on the left side of, of him, there are many, many papers. So you can understand that he uses papers, he was painting, if, if he is satisfied he can keep, not he destroyed, but it is very easy to destroy a, a paper. For paintings, uh, it takes time to destroy or not. <laughs> so uh, he first uh, he wanted to walk again, to walk again, till he was exhausted. Um, at the end of his day, when he, he, was, he leaves the studio, he was many times totally exhausted. Yeah. So, and uh, when he become, became old, it was impossible for him. So he told to Francoise, uh, 
I have not more the way, the way, I have not more the path, like a, like a, a Taoist uh, spirit. But in fact, he is still at the path, at the way, but not for oil painting. He did for watercolors, a new way, easier for him to do, but uh, so mastering, <laughs> not, not uh, able for many people. You can enjoy.